So what the emergency drought program does is it brings together almost all the tools a water district or a city would need to implement uh, conservation-based rates, which science tells us, economists tell us, is the one way that we can really drive conservation in a way that's fair and equitable. It has a sustainable revenue stream for the water district because we want healthy water districts and we want happy rate payers, and it accomplishes both. So what are conservation-based water rates? Unlike a flat water rate with just one per unit price for water for all customers, or tiered water rates where the price of each tier apply to all customers regardless of individual water use, conservation-based water rates have tiers that are based on individual water use and state water efficiency standards. Each tier is based on the cost of service for providing water to customers taking into consideration the number of persons per household, the customer's landscape area, and local weather conditions. These customer characteristics help set the tiers or budgets for the customer. As a customer uses water beyond their budget, they experience an increase in the price per water and respond by conserving. Hence the name conservation-based water rates. Conservation-based water rates are also known as allocation-based water rates or budget-based water rates. So these workshops are intended to educate agencies with traditional rate structures and get education from those who have allocation-based rate structures. What's it like? What does it mean for your agency? What has it done for your revenues? What has it done for conservation? So since we started this process, another thing happened, and that was the Court of Appeals handed down a decision on the San Juan Capistrano case. Now, who has heard of the San Juan Capistrano case? So what did, uh, what did the appellate court say in the San Juan Capistrano decision? The newspaper report, reporting was that the San Juan Capistrano case, the appellate court struck down tiered rates. And that's, I know this is shocking, but that's not true. The newspapers didn't get it exactly right. So what the appellate court decided in that case was that the city of San Juan Capistrano's tiered rates were unconstitutional. The court was very clear in saying that tiered rates can be constitutional if they're done properly. The whole question is, how you set them up and what process you go through. And from the governor's executive order, he wants to look at rate structure to incentivize conservation. So I think there is a recognition and the philosophy and the way that this rate structure works is very well supported throughout the state. We reacted when the governor called for um, voluntary consumption reductions. Last July and August, our revenues fell 15% because of that conservation messaging. Um, and with our flat rate structure, after two months into our fiscal year, we were 700,000 under projections. First, it's educating the board members, then it's educating the staff, and then it's educating the customers. Once you get it, once the light bulb comes on and you see how effective it can be, you end up saying, why didn't we do it 10 years ago? Going through this budget-based process allowed me to better understand our operation, even though I've been in the business 20 years, honestly. Um, and I think it made my board truly understand our operation and how the revenues and how our expenses are covered as a result of going through this process than they ever would by doing their traditional um, fixed base that we used to do in the past. So it has been great. So what I was uh, so impressed with when I first started hearing about this First thing was, you mean this has been around for 15 years? Why haven't we heard about it before? It became really clear to me that it's going to be a tool that allows people, first of all, to understand when they're wasting water. They understand the fairness. They can see what it means to them individually. These are graphs summarizing the study that UC Riverside did with Eastern Municipal Water District. Uh, we basically undertook a demand modeling analysis to figure out how much of the observed decline in household level water demand was due to their adoption of allocation-based rates. And what we see is that the rate structure impinged upon their behavior much more than average. Those inefficient households, we think, are now about 25 to 30 percent below where they would be under an equivalent uniform rate structure. And that's a pretty substantial decrease. And so for the efficient households, what you can see up top there is that they were originally spending about 11 and a half months out of the year within their budget. That didn't really change under, under the allocation-based rates. So the takeaway message here is that allocation-based rates appear to provide a very clear signal about conservation while also keeping the user costs low for households that aren't using much water or decide they're not going to use much water because they don't have the ability to pay for it. 
Um, and it also impinges upon the inefficient users significantly more than it impinges upon the efficient or average efficient users. A robust rate structure belongs at the core of any conservation strategy. If you think about it, your customers can really decide or not be affected by almost any other program that you might put in place, but everybody gets a bill. As long as you're metered, everybody is, you're watching everybody's water consumption, everybody's got to pay that bill. Pricing affects 100% of everybody in your district. Obviously, we think allocation-based rates have a lot going for them and something to give serious consideration to. And then I think we've also found out the benefit was that it really established two-way communications with our customers. We know which customers are using water within their allocations and we know more specifically which customers are going over their allocations. If we want to reach out to customers to help them with conservation, which customers should we be focusing on? The ones who have over allocation use. When you just tell people reduce your water usage, they don't know what that really means. Well, how, how do I do it? Am I efficient? Am I inefficient? I, I don't know. But if you show them what their budget is based on efficient use for indoor and outdoor, so it's fully meeting their needs, they're not being deprived, but it's efficient way to meet their needs. And once they see that and they know what they need to do, we say stay within your budget. Our customers have reduced by 25% over the period of time that we implemented this, and actually 85% of them are within budget. Um, I was a uh kind of a naysayer to, to budget-based rates a couple years ago. and But I came, became a believer when I started looking at the numbers, um, understanding that we continue to experience decreases in sales. I'm not an economist or anything like that, but it's just not a really good business model uh, to see loss in sales and figuring out how we're going to pay for things. Um, so that's what really started me thinking about it. And a successful rate structure needs to do a lot of things at the same time. It needs to recover our revenues, we may have drought, we've got public perception. How do we create something that's sustainable for our economics and our water supply? So what's the impact of allocation-based rates for the agencies over these past years that have uh, uh, implemented them? There's certainly less risk of fixed revenue loss. We saw a significant landscape reduction first. That was really the, the sector, whether it was at a home or commercial landscapes, that we saw the, the largest drop in water use. It created a new funding mechanism for agencies to have conservation funds. At, at agencies with allocation-based rates, 80% plus meet the allocations. That's a great response. Is the water allocation process fair? and do you understand the rate structure? And both of those questions uh, solicited an 85% response rate that they thought it was fair and that they understood. Here's in that same agency, the blue line is where they implemented allocation-based rates. Remember there had been three, almost four years of drought prior to that. And you can see where the residential GPCD was before implementing the allocation-based rates. That was stunning, that was three or four years of drought. So what it really took was a, a level of a commitment from the board of directors. We had to look each other in the eye and really embrace a commitment, embrace a, a change in our attitudes towards our, our business dealings. So in 2011, we adopted this rate structure because a great thing about allocation-based rate structure is it puts the responsibility and the choice in the hands of the customers. Because I'm telling you, I was very skeptical when this whole water buddy rate program got started. And I figured, look, if uniform rates had worked for my grandfather for 50 years, they could work for another 50 years, all right? So what are they trying to do? I, in fact, I, I could never understand any of their programs. You know, why would you spend money to encourage people to not come to you and buy stuff, right? I, what parallel universe could this be from? But it happened. So at first I thought, well, you know what? I'm just, you know, I'll quietly sit about it. But, you know, every time there's a little problem, I would always mention, yeah, well, they. Yeah, that, that's their program. That's them. And then the whole thing started to picking up steam. And I thought, well, I don't want to look bad. I'm a team player. So I began using the word we. Yeah, we're, we're implementing water budget rates. Yeah, we're, we're figuring this thing out. We're changing our systems. We're going to be more equitable, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. But you know what? It has been so successful that every time I talk about water budget rates, the entire thing was my idea. It worked that easily. So now I take full credit for it. But it has truly been a benefit to our customers. It's been a benefit for encouraging efficient use of water. And I'm very proud to say I am no longer a skeptic. I want to talk to you about the grant program. When the drought hit, there was another round of funding and they really wanted to focus this money on helping out with the drought. And we applied, the software <laughs> member agencies applied, and we were successful in getting a grant. What we're talking about today is really money that can support water budget base rate implementation. 
So we're seeking actually to overall reduce water demand through retail agencies through the adoption of conservation-based rate structures. So in addition to direct support to your agency in funding, we also have a number of watershed support tools. Uh, the aerial mapping, again, a key part of your water budget base rates. This is something we're doing now with grant dollars, and we provide that directly to your agency. Uh, we're mapping over 2,100 square miles of the urban ag areas throughout the watershed. And the ET information. This is a pretty important foundational piece of data that you need, uh, knowing the temperature, humidity, the rainfall, you know, all these factors make up ET. There's a lot of automated uh, systems out there where we can collect that using satellite information or also the SEMA stations. And our goal is really to get this implemented in 10 more agencies. We have one already in the funnel. So how is this all gonna work? If you're interested, sign up and get into the queue. First come, first serve. Provide us a detailed list of services that you want to be uh, to implement and proceed to implement those and uh, we'll approach the uh, SAPA committee, get their okay, and then once the DWR has that documentation that you've actually begun the process to implement that, a check will be in the mail. Our message today was, yes, this may be difficult, but it's very doable. And the upside of doing it and getting it right is great. Uh, looking back, we would have loved to have had this kind of resource and opportunity. There's financial assistance, there's technical assistance, there's information provided by myself and others who have been studying these things. I think now is really the time because there's a lot of support available now that hasn't been available before. We have tools and expertise and experience and that package is a sure win for anybody who's looking to go this way.